And so Stephanie, uh, to get things started, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, so I am the director of talent here at Built-in and a little bit of background because I feel like most of us who have ever been in a talent capacity never went to college or thought, <laughs> never went into college thinking that we would become talent acquisition, HR, et cetera. So um, I've always been in some form of talent acquisition after leaving school. I graduated, I'm going to age myself here, but I graduated during the recession um, of 2009. And so kind of took the first job I could get, realized that I was kind of driven by this sense of helping people identify what their strengths are and what they could do with their career. So um, I have always since then been in some sort of talent acquisition capacity, whether it's working as a director of talent at an organization or selling talent solutions to talent um, folks at different organizations. Um, I've always had this passion and alignment of helping people identify what they want to do with their careers. Awesome. And tell me, how did you come to Built-in? And, you know, for folks that don't know what Built-in does, maybe you can give a little background there as well. Yeah, I'll talk high level about what Built-in does sure. and then how I got there. So Built-in essentially is a community where tech professionals can come to learn about industry trends, um, gain skill sets, network, and then most importantly, learn about companies outside of what a job description can typically provide. So um, we talk about the value many times of, of employer branding, and that is what companies have a chance to do when they sign up with our platform, is highlight and showcase their company in a way that a job slot can't. Um, and so I first came across my now manager, Kelly Keegan, back in 2019 before the pandemic hit, um, and had an extreme interest in what was going on at Built In. They were growing rapidly, had a great um, grasp on what was needed with where the market was going. And we hit it off. And I started working with them about two years ago as the director of talent. Awesome. So right in the height of the, the pandemic, um, how have things changed over the last couple of years since you've been there? Oh, my word. Well, uh, drastically. Um, and one of the fun parts about working at a smaller organization is you can be agile. You can flex into new roles and responsibilities abilities outside of what you would even imagine. And that's actually one of the things that we look for with a lot of the folks that do come on board with us is um, this heightened sense of, of wanting to try new things, um, wanting to stretch their skill set, um, that intrinsic motivation that you can't train someone. Um, so with that, to answer your question as to how things have changed, like many tech companies right now, economic conditions are challenging uh, and we are monitoring the market conditions very, very closely. So um, in terms of overall, how my role has changed is prior to this past year, I was heavily focused on talent acquisition and leading our talent acquisition efforts, leaving a leading a team of six. Um, since then, since things have slowed down, like many other tech companies, my main focus and shift right now is focusing on talent retention and making sure that the folks that are at our organization feel empowered. We're up leveling their skills. Um, we're identifying new opportunities of ways that they can flex within the organization to make us stronger and, and more agile as we weather the economic conditions. And yeah, I think that's a great point. Like in rough markets like it is today, you know, not a lot of teams are thinking that way. They look at their talent acquisition team as purely we use them for recruiting. So when hiring slows down, like what do they do? Um, so it's great that you guys are, you know, pivoting some of your focus to, you know, more on retention and making sure that you keep the people that you've got really, really happy um, when times are slower from a hiring standpoint. And then, you know, you're still building pipeline in the meantime. And when you guys do press the gas on hiring again, you've got the team and the foundation and the pipeline um, to really be successful. I think the mistake a lot of companies make is they just completely shut it down and stop all recruiting um, and don't, you know, put attention back onto employee retention. So that's great to hear you guys are doing that. Um, you mentioned a little bit about the makeup of the team. What does it look like today? Who are, you know, what are the different roles? What's everybody responsible for? Yeah, we have five individuals right now on our people operations team. We have some that are focused on uh, DEI. Um, Kelly Keegan, who I mentioned earlier, is our VP of people. So she 
oversees all the people function. Uh, I'm focused heavily on talent, which encompasses the talent acquisition as well as retention. We have a recruiting manager who's focused on the day-to-day of, of making sure that the roles that are open, we're still getting a lot of talent and bringing candidates through the pipeline and closing the roles that are open. Um, and then we have a general people ops specialist. Got it. And how big is the company now? We have 175 employees, roughly, give or take okay. right now with a few more open roles. Nice. So with your current focus on retention, can you share a little bit about some of the things that you guys are focused on? Yeah, there are quite a few things. Um, and a lot of it begins with, for, uh, for a lot of companies right now, it's going to begin with your employee value proposition, that EVP, and making sure that the individuals that are there can fall back in love with your company. Like, again, we, we have this heavy focus on making sure that those that are there are loving what they're doing, are loving being here, um, and still feel challenged and motivated and engaged at work. Um, so we have a big focus right now on, on kind of rebuilding our employee value proposition and rolling that out to our organization. Additionally, um, I have a heavy focus right now on our our leadership team. Uh, we know that a lot of make or break for an organization falls within the manager and director level. Um, I compare it almost to a stone throwed in a very still lake. It, the managers have the biggest ripple effect on an organization. What they do matters. And so we have um, set aside time. We have a whole whole playbook right now for our managers this year, but it's going to be uh, individual coaching and development as well as monthly forums that we host um, focused on a different topic every month. So this past topic, it was delivering feedback effectively for your teams. Uh, we also have future forums designed for how do you show your employees appreciation? There's this theory of five love languages. There's five languages of appreciation within the workforce that we're going to be um, being able to describe better to our managers to cascade down to their teams. So there are quite a few things that we're doing right now. Those are just some of the high level highlights of what we're focused on. Yeah, that's great. Are you, for the training and coaching that you guys are doing, are you using anybody from the outside? Or are you building all of those programs and Internally. It's a good question. Um, we're exploring the idea of some outside, um, but we're really focused on what we have here internally um, and being able to build things out internally. We Again, I'm talking about flexing the new muscles for folks. Um, it's bringing in managers who might have developed a skill set that we don't have um, and asking them to lead sessions or um, really depending on our people team to grow and develop some of the, the forums here. So again, exploring outside opportunities, but really leaving, leaning heavily on the great resources that we have here internally already. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer to that, right? Like, I think there's benefit in looking outside because you yeah. get outside perspective, but flexing that muscle internally then allows you to build programs that are repeatable, right? So it's like, as you bring in new managers, they can run through those same exact programs, um, you know, and you can continue to iterate on them versus if you bring somebody in from the outside, it's like, can we run our training? And then do we bring them back in like three to six months to do it again? Or, or um, how do we structure it? So I think a mix of both um, is usually good, but it's it's great you guys are building some things out internally. Um, speaking about the EVP, um, employee value proposition, you bring up a really good point um, about, you know, making sure that employees are continuing to fall in love with your company. I think on the talent acquisition side, you know, that's where a lot of companies put a lot of effort and resources is like, how do we make people fall in love with us to join the company? Um, and then they get on board mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe some of that messaging isn't, you know, continuous throughout the employee life cycle. Um, so how are you guys, you know, kind of merging the two strategies, right? Like, how are you, you know, messaging to candidates what it's like to be at Built-in and why they should join Built-in? And then how does that play out, you know, once they're on board? Like, what are some of the things you're doing to get them to continue to fall in love and continue to align with the EVP? From the TA side or from like the talent attraction side, it's a lot easier to answer. It's sure. um, being able to publicize that on your website, Right. I mean, that's case in point. That's that's the number one thing. Um, but also being able to talk about it um, in every step of the candidate process. Uh, we have a not only do we have on our website just a general like what are our perks and benefits? What are our values? What's our leadership team like? Um, but we also incorporate that into every step of our of our recruiting process. On the flip side, once once the candidate is closed and they come on board here and they are a part of, of our group, what we're talking about now is being able to incorporate that. And we talk about training the managers is letting the managers, giving them the tools and resources they need to know our EVP, to know what sets us apart from other organizations um, so that if and when 
their direct reports come to them, thinking about another opportunity outside the organization, they're able to know what sets us apart. And sometimes, right, sometimes it makes sense for somebody to leave. Like they might have outgrown, they might have circumstantial things that make them want to leave sure. the company. But with that, if there's somebody here that we can retain and we like, we really believe that they should be here, how do we, again, introduce our perks, our benefits, our values? How do we find that alignment there? Um, and most of that will come through the power of the manager and really working on those development conversations with, with their directs. One other thing to note on that, we have this big focus right now of um, kind of shifting our focus of performance reviews into this idea of full-out development check-ins. Um, performance reviews tend to be somewhat antiquated, um, a little stuffy in the way that most companies go about those. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine like every six months you get nervous, you have to think about what you did over the past six months. And most of the time those are manager led where the manager is the one kind of laying into what the employee has done well, what they should be improving upon, et cetera. We want to shift everything all together and put the power, imagine it as like the driver's seat. We want to put the direct report in the driver's seat of their own development. And instead of thinking at of it as in a performance review, we really want them to focus on a development check-in. Like, where do you want to grow over the next, instead of six months, over the next three months? How do you want to develop? How can I help facilitate that as your manager? Um, and introducing that as, as a way that the company can come alongside you and we believe in making you better while you're here, um, that is at the root and the heart of our EVP. Um, so that was a little sidetrack into some of the things that we're focused on right now from, from a tactical standpoint. Yeah, that's that's great, though. I think, yeah, I think too, too often performance reviews are like a manager writing up a report of this is what the person did well and this is where they can improve and that's kind of it. Um, I think, you know, it's really important to have both sides of it where you have an employee, first of all, self-reflect on, you know, the previous period since the last review, but also think about, you know, looking forward, what are areas they've identified for themselves that either they can grow in, um, like areas to improve or things that they want to grow in. Um, and it's the manager's job to think about those things as well. And then in the performance review, you know, becomes more of a collaborative session. Of course, you're going to give feedback on where somebody can, you know, get better and where they've been, you know, doing really well. Um, but ultimately, it's about looking forward, right? Because like, you know, the goal of that should be to come out with an action plan where, you know, as an organization and as individuals, we get better as a result of this conversation and we've developed a path to do it. Yeah. Um, so it's great you guys are taking a lot of those yes. steps. Um, tell me, like, if we jump, you know, back a little bit to the hiring process, you mentioned you're communicating the EVP and different aspects of it at every step of the candidate process. Because you guys are doing such a good job of messaging that and, you know, continuing to hone that messaging and making sure it's front and center for your current employees. Are you guys leveraging current employees as part of that messaging in the hiring process to candidates, whether it be you're letting candidates talk to existing employees, whether it be you're sharing content from existing employees in the hiring process? How are you How are you bringing that all together? One of the things that we've developed for our, our candidates, it's not only our website, but we've developed a, a candidate playbook, if you will. Um, and we, this isn't new to us. We've taken this from some of, some of those other great forward thinking tech companies, but allowing um, candidates, once they start with us in the in the selection process, to really get an idea of what they can expect throughout the interview process. Um, so in our candidate playbook, it does highlight not only what they can expect within the interview process, but who they'll be, be meeting with and links to their LinkedIn profiles, some background on those folks so that they go into every interview knowing, okay, this is who I'll meet with. Additionally, we try our best to um, to open it up for questions even outside of the interview. So I, what I love personally is when a candidate says, hey, I like, I loved meeting with this person. Could I schedule 20 minutes with them to talk about the job just on a one-off? Um, and so that is something that shows initiative by the candidate, but also I love seeing that because they really want to get into like all the questions that they didn't have answered in that interview. And sometimes we'll set that up proactively, right? If we feel like that candidate has unanswered questions from the interview of, of being able to partner them with somebody that could answer questions outside of the typical process. Um, so those are a few ways that we go a little bit above and beyond for our candidates going through the process. Yeah, love it. I, I think there's huge value in, you know, obviously candidates are going to connect with the interviewers, um, which obviously includes 
a hiring manager. But I think there's huge value in connecting candidates with sometimes people that aren't involved in the interview process and definitely aren't the hiring manager. You know, in most cases, that ends up being a peer who's in a similar role already in the company because they can have a transparent, you know, off the record type of conversation that has no impact on the hiring process. And it lets the candidate get their questions answered. Um, let's your employee share, you know, what's going on within the business. Um, and ultimately helps a candidate make a decision like, is this a place that I can align with and where I want to be? And, you know, I think as an employer, that's what you want. You don't want somebody just saying yes, because it's like, it's a job and I want to move to the next step of the hiring process. Like you want them to truly be aligned with your employee value proposition. And I think a great way to do that is by connecting, you know, two people, um, candidate and somebody within the organization. So it's awesome to hear you guys are doing that. I love the idea of a candidate playbook. Can you share, are you guys doing anything in that to like, co you know, aside from preparing them and being transparent about what the hiring, pro hiring process looks like and what different steps are and who they'll be meeting with. Is there anything you guys are doing to outside of that to prepare them to be successful in those steps, like things they should research or things they should prepare before that type of interview? Yeah. And it's a great question. And it, it, the answer is it depends upon the role. Um, what we found, um, so we, there's, while we try to streamline our process as best as possible, there are certain roles that are going to require more or different types of process. So, um, for example, our engineers, um, most of the time they're going to, when they do an on-site with our team, are going to have some sort of coding, live coding activity that they're doing alongside with our team. So that's simply an example of ways that we best prepare candidates and we give them ahead of time an idea of what this exercise looks like, what tools they'll be using, um, the links to everything in advance, um, and specifically what we're looking for in that. On the flip side, if we, if we think about our sales sales process, um, many times by the time you get to a team interview, which is typically our third interview, there's some sort of role play that we'll provide in advance. Uh, and we'll let them know who those folks are that they're meeting with, what the scenario is, what the questions are. Um, and then many times our recruiter will call in advance um, and make sure that they're ready and prepared and see if they have any questions in advance. Um, in preparation for that. Sales is a little different because it's like really thinking on your feet. Um, but uh, especially for our engineering teams, we, we want to prepare folks as best as possible for what to expect. Yeah. And I think by offering up the playbook or a conversation with the recruiter to make sure that the person's prepared when it actually comes time for the interview and you get to see the prep work they put in and how they perform. I would imagine there's some type of correlation with like the most engaged candidates that people that are really bought in, you know, hopefully are doing the most prep work and come and, and just blow you guys away. So I think it's, it's good because in the real world, like once they're on board with you guys, you know, hopefully you're setting them up for success in their job by providing them with some guidance and the managers coaching them and, you know, uh, you know, giving them some clarity on expectations and things like that. So it's important to do that in the interview process versus I feel like too often companies mm -hmm. don't do that. And so somebody shows up for an interview and they're like, okay, what do you got for me? I don't, I don't really know what to expect. And that's just not how yeah. the real world works. Um, so I feel like you get a better sense of how somebody prepares and thinks about their preparation and goes about their preparation. Operation, and then ultimately how they pull it all together in the actual interview. You know what's interesting on that too, and this was fascinating to see during the great resignation. What we realized was a lot of candidates, if they were interviewing with us, chances are they were interviewing with probably five other companies. And it, was, it wasn't like we set the bar lower, but I had to go to all of our hiring managers, specifically with our sales, and say, you, we aren't the only one they're courting right now. We aren't the only one they're considering. And so don't be surprised if they don't appear as excited about us as we are with them um, because they are keeping their cards close. They're considering a lot of other options. They might be a fabulous candidate, but don't hold it against them if they don't come out and say, I want to work for you. I'm very excited to work for you because they're considering their options. Now, it's it's interesting, right? Because you want somebody that wants to work there. But during the great resignation, we almost had to change our mindset with the candidates coming in that they were getting a lot of interest elsewhere. And we, we had to bring our A game just as much as they did. And we still do. Um, but I've never seen such a 180 <laughs> in the tech space as I have in the past year uh, in, in terms of um, candidates really bringing their A game now as opposed to a year ago. Hmm. 
That is interesting. I mean, it, it's, you know, highly relatable to a sales process. Like, of course, as a salesperson, you're going to want the warm lead that comes into a sales conversation or a demo that's like ready to buy before you even talked about the problems that you solve and the benefits of your product, so on and yes. so forth. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to end up being, you know, the highest value long-term customer for you. Um, you know, there's going to be customers that come in and they're in a competitive buying process and they're looking at a bunch of different providers and they're going to hold the cards, you know, close to the vest. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's, I think it's easy to misinterpret a candidate's engagement and excitement with they're going to be the best employee for us um, versus, you know, somebody that's, you know, maybe a little bit more reserved about their, they might be really excited, but maybe they're keeping it closer to the vest. Mm -hmm. um, and it's your job and on the talent acquisition team to really uncover, you know, who's going to be the best person for this job based on a variety of factors. Um, so that's interesting that you've seen that play out um, and that you've seen kind of the back and forth where it's like, you know, in a competitive market from an employer standpoint, like, you know, candidates have a variety of options. And then, you know, on the flip side, you know, everybody's excited. Everybody wants the job. Everybody loves built and everybody wants to work there. Um, so it's interesting, you know, you, you kind of kind of stay in the middle and not get swayed, you know, too much one way or the other, just based on, you know, candidate, the perceived eagerness of that candidate. Um, so that's, that's exactly. great. I couldn't agree more. And so can you, I know you mentioned like the hiring process is different for different roles. Sales is going to be different from engineering, but generally, can you walk me through what the hiring process might look like at Built-in? Yeah. General template. We don't want to go beyond four separate meetings. That's general rule here um, because speed of hire, time kills all deals. We want to make sure that we get what we need while that candidate is with us. And all of our interviews minus some of our senior leadership are going to be held via Zoom. And it's amazing what Zoom has been able to do for our speed of, of our process. Think about back, I, I even think back to like 2019 when everything had to be done in person and there were eight different steps and like you had that luxury back then. Now we don't. Now we need to like speed it up. And so typically um, a recruiting process for us, regardless of the role, is going to include a recruiter screen on the phone, which is about 30 minutes. Then it will include a higher hiring manager Zoom meeting for 30 minutes. Then we'll pull the team in um, to make sure that there's a values fit with our organization, get alignment on the individual from multiple parties. Um, so there will be some sort of team meeting. And then the final one with either a hiring manager or additional VP leader at our organization. That's general. And of course, every role is going to be different, but that's like our general role. And again, we don't want to go beyond four because you'll lose people. Um, and yeah. also we should be able to get the information we need in theory by four interviews with someone. hundred percent. And I think, you know, we hear it all the time is like, even with recruiting here at Spark Hire, you know, we'll have candidates are engaged in other processes with other companies and, and we're very similar and we try and keep it to like compress the stages as much as possible possible, obviously ensuring we're still getting the information yes. we need to make a decision. Um, but we hear all the time, candidates are engaged and they're like, I've been in like five, six, seven interviews with this company and it's taken weeks and weeks and weeks. Like at first I was really excited to work for them, but the the lag of the hiring process and just the number of hoops I've got to jump through, a number of people I've got to talk to, just A, seems like overkill. B, it is like, I got to get a job. Like I can't yeah. wait <laughs> two, three months to like get a decision back on whether or not I'm going to work there. And three, it gives me this impression of an organization that like just, you know, has too many chefs in the kitchen, can't make a decision, too many steps, inefficient. Um, and that probably speaks to some things that like, once you come on board with that type of company, like, you know, maybe there's a lot of red tape to get things done or constant approval processes or just things take way too long. And if as an employee, I value agility, um, to your point earlier in this, mm -hmm. in this call, like that's not going to cut it for me. <laughs> um, and so I think, right. you know, you know, a candidate can see that, um, directly in the hiring process. So it's important to keep things as compressed as you can. Um, you know, given your Built one in. thing to note on that is sorry, go, oh, ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. One thing to note on that as well. Um, when it came, so back during the Great Resignation in 2021, we noticed we were getting a huge drop off 
between our hiring manager interviews and our team interviews for our software engineers. And because of that, we have this wonderful VP of engineering who was so forward thinking. We came to him with this problem and he said, uh, we're, we're requiring a take-home uh, coding challenge rather than an in-person. And we, we realized that this extra step or this extra homework, if you will, for our mm-hmm. candidates was causing many to leave. And so we quickly shifted the process and we what was for our engineers, four different interviews or four separate interviews we condensed into three and did an in-person coding challenge, which changed the game and it sped up our our hiring process significantly so that we could make faster and better decisions while the candidate was still very interested. So um, I can't stress enough how important that is and how much I appreciated his leadership in stepping in and saying, like, recognizing the problem when we brought it to him and making a solid change to the hiring process because of that. Yep. And the way you've got to think about it is it's not about removing things like, okay, we're just not going to do this anymore. Because then you're removing a data point that you've already agreed upon was important for you to make a decision. It's about figuring out ways to consolidate steps in compressed time. So even if, um, you know, that in-person interview where they're doing some live coding and maybe speaking with some people within the organization is technically now longer um, in duration than than your previous Mm -hmm. in-person meeting, you've consolidated two steps into one. And those two steps, since they happen at different times, that stretches out by days, if not a week. And now you've compressed that into, you know, maybe 30 more minutes, but it's all done in the same day. Um, So you keep candidates engaged, you get them through the pipeline faster, and ultimately you're able to offer them faster than other employers. Um, You know, one of the things I wanted to circle back to is given the, you know, services of Built-in and, you know, the importance that Built-in places on employer branding. I know you mentioned you're integrating um, employer branding and your EVP all throughout your candidate communication at every step um, along the way. How have you found that to improve time to hire? Because a lot of people, they won't tie those two things together. Um, but I, I definitely think there's there's a strong relationship there. So I'd love to hear you know, what you guys have seen. There's absolutely a strong integration. Uh, I compare it to when was the last time you went to a restaurant where you didn't look at the menu in advance? Like probably didn't happen, right? Or when did you plan your last vacation where you didn't look at the Airbnbs available? So um, candidates do their homework and they do their homework to extreme detail. I think I read that the average candidate looks at seven seven different websites about your organization before they decide to apply. So step number one, if you think of the top of the funnel, you have to bring your A game from an employer branding perspective. Um, The candidate needs to know what you offer, how you're different, um, what you can do for them during their time with you. So top of the funnel, that's step number one. Uh, It speeds up your process because you are getting high quality candidates coming to you that already have a sense of who you are without having to ask those questions in the interview. Um, And so they already know like, oh, built in, like you offer half day Fridays. Oh, you provide remote work. Like you have flex scheduling. Um, These are all questions that would come up in a lengthy interview process that we don't even we we've addressed those questions right off the bat. So that that comes to mind as one of the biggest ways that it speeds it up is simply getting all of those questions answered and a sense of who you are for the right people to come to you rather than you having to go to every every single candidate out there. That's an excellent point. Educate you know, educating the candidate, educating the buyer, right? Very similar mm-hmm. um, things like, you know, you often go to software websites and you know, I say this because I'm in the I'm in the software as a service business, you know, and it's like request pricing and, you know, fill out this form and, you know, all these obstructions just to get to in information yeah. to learn if I'm even interested in proceeding down, you know, the path of a sales conversation with this company. Similarly, um, in the hiring process, too many companies put all these obstructions up front and it's like, fill out our long job application, then wait to hear back. And then we're like, it's like they wait until the recruiter actually connects with the candidate to start giving them information. And that might be, you know, a week later, two weeks later. So first of all, too much time has passed. And second of all, you've probably eliminated people that don't even enter your pipeline because they just can't find information on you. So having a constant presence, controlling the narrative, being all over. So when they go to find all these different sources about your your company, um, you're present. Um, and so, you know, them being able to find that fast, gets them to apply fast, gets them engaged and bought in right, right out of the gate. Um, and when you have a more educated candidate, 
they're more engaged and it's easier for you to move them along the process faster rather than them like, eh, I don't know about this company. I don't know enough information yet. Do I want to like engage in extra steps just to keep learning? Uh, whereas you guys have done that right up front. Um, so love, love what you yes. guys. And it's, it's, it's amazing how the candidate experience from the application time can turn people on or off to whether or not they want to apply. I won't say the name of the company, but prior to coming to built in, I, uh, considered a talent acquisition leadership position at another organization. And as soon as I went to go apply, like their job looked great. It was posted, um, went to it, but it took me to their external site, external software. And the system was so antiquated that I was like, I don't even want to work at this company because if I'm going to be in charge of talent acquisition, I'm, I'm asking people to do this. Like, first of all, I would need to overhaul and change this whole thing right away. Um, but candidates, you're going to lose 90% of the people before you even get a chance to meet with them. So that matters. Uh, and I would, I would absolutely, as a candidate, I'd be looking for that sort of thing um, in terms of what the companies have to offer from the get-go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, well, this has been great. Really, really helpful for me to learn more about um, a company that I love and built in we're a customer um, of yours and we definitely leverage the employer branding content all throughout uh, not only to attract candidates but also all throughout our hiring process so definitely a big fan um, so thanks for sharing tons of insight um, and just yeah really appreciate you coming on absolutely thanks for the invite it's a joy being here it's great speaking with you Josh. Good. yeah likewise